The last time we stopped um, at 61 points, that is known as Shaviyatra, and we said it's a more detailed form of Shavasana, which can also be done in the seated um, position and sometimes just called the survey or the body survey or the seated survey. This time we are going to do a practice called Shitali Karna and this is a very deep practice and is not to be mixed up with the breathing exercise also known as Shitali. Uh, it's a different practice and it's a very advanced pranayam practice because it's not just a breathing exercise but it actually works with prana itself. In the initial stages it may be for beginners or those who do not start systematically. It may remain a mere technique but if you have followed the systematic approach that we have been discussing over the last 10 weeks or so, if you have prepared yourself, not merely by doing a systematic practice, but also taking care of things like food, environment, all these things, then it will be more than just a technique. You will get many, many insights through these. One of the most important things we should know about Shitali Karna is how to create the right environment for this. Since Shitali takes us very deep down, right down to the layer of prana itself, It is important to create a suitable environment. The best environment is um, a dark place, not very bright, not um, disturbing light, preferably dark, or you can do this in the night. Do it indoors in a room where you feel safe. Don't do it outdoors where it's noisy, maybe bright. In case you should fall asleep, you should feel safe. Therefore, do it indoors in a safe place. Do it when it's very quiet. So naturally, best place to do it would be somewhere also where the environment is quiet. But not everybody has the luxury. So if you do not have a quiet environment around you, if you live in a big city, for example, or you live in an area that's a little bit loud, you can do this at night or early hours of the morning. What is important is that you should not do this when you are tired. If you do it when you're tired, what's going to happen is you're going to fall asleep. Do not do it when you have eaten too much or have just eaten or overeaten. What happens is again the tendency to fall asleep as well as gases rising, causing heartburn, causing discomfort. So these are some of the things that you need to take care of whilst um, practicing Shitali Karna. We are using the diagram, it says 61 points. I'm using this diagram only for convenience sake. Obviously, we are not going to go to these particular 61 points while doing Shitali Karna, but it will give you a good idea of how Shitali Karna is practiced. First of all, you need to lie down. And on what do you lie down? You should never lie on a soft mattress. 
definitely do not lie down on the bed on which you are used to sleeping. The bed in which you are used to sleeping is connected to a habit that has been formed over a long period of time, that when you go there, you sleep. The practice of Shitali Karna is not supposed to make you sleep. It is supposed to make you conscious. Whilst the practice of Shitali Karna may help you with sleep problems eventually, it may help you if you are suffering from insomnia or you have disturbed sleep or the quality of sleep is not good or you sleep too, too long hours, this practice will help all those issues. But during the practice, you do not fall asleep. If you are falling asleep, you have to stop. Therefore, do not use soft mattress or a um, mattress or environment in which you are used to sleeping. When you lie down, during Shitali Karna, the body cools down. What does Shitali mean? Shitali Karna comes from the Sanskrit verb Shitali Karoti, which means to cool. Shitali, similar to the Hindi word Shital, means cool, calm, not exciting. It means also free from passions, gentle. It also means, interestingly enough, lotus and moon. So these are all things that have a cool quality, you know, lotus or, or moon. So it gives the indication that Shritali Karna is a practice that cools you, calms you. And if you contemplate on this, it gives you a little hint here. It activates Ida, this, the moon element in you. That's the Nari. There are two Naris, Ida and Pingala, Sun and Moon. And this practice activates the Nari, Ida, the feminine aspect in you. When you're lying down, the best thing that you can do is to insulate yourself since the practice tends to cool the person down, cools down the body. You need to wear things that are uh, which will protect you from getting feeling cold, especially if you happen to live in a colder environment. If necessary, you can cover yourself if you're living in a colder place, of course, and you need to use a thin mattress or thicker woolen blankets or something that insulates. Traditionally, what the yogis used to do was a little elaborate construct which they had of, a, of wooden planks. And on those wooden planks, they had either woolen blankets or some sheets which were then comfortable. The purpose of the wooden blanket was to insulate. So another way you can do that insulation would be using um, a silk shawl perhaps or some people could if they wish use animal skin such as sheepskin which is easily available in some parts of the world or use a very thin mattress and then maybe cover it with a silk shawl. Use a very thin pillow so that your head is slightly raised 
This will make sure that you don't have gases coming up when they're released, which would call, cause heartburn and disturb you. So a, a very thin pillow would also be useful. So these are the basic um, things you need to know even before you start Shitali Karna. Any questions so far on, on this? Good, in that case, I will start. The practice of Shritikli Karna begins with exhalation from crown of the head right down to the tip of the toes. The exhalation should be natural, smooth, without pause, gentle, and then you inhale back right up to the top of the crown again. And you do this 10 times. There's no need of counting. When you start, before you start this, you can have normal diaphragmatic breathing about five, six times, and then you can start. Because once you start this process of breathing, really it's, a, it's kind of a long exhalation and a long inhalation. If it is very fine, it will be very smooth, slow, gentle, you do this 10 times. Now, after you have done this 10 times, you begin again to exhale from the crown of the head down to the ankles this time and back up back to the crown of the head once more you do this all together 10 times without a pause no counting required natural smooth soft noiseless breathing then you exhale to the knees and inhale to the crown of the head. Once again, 10 times. Smooth, gentle, noiseless, breathing without counts. You don't need counts because now your body itself is kind of a measure of the length of the breath and the body itself is now making sure that your exhalation and inhalation is more or less equal. Now there's a slight difference. You breathe out again, exhale, but now only to the perineum, here to the perineum. That's the Muladhara Chakra, first chakra. And back up again, you inhale. But now this is only five times. You don't need to do it ten times anymore. You're doing it five times. Once again, you breathe out. This time to the Navel Chakra. Manipura Chakra. Inhale up, back to the crown of the head. Five times, no pauses, no jerky moments, very gentle, very soft, smooth breathing, no noises. Same procedure, now breathe out again to the heart chakra, anahat chakra. Inhale, right up here. Exhale to the throat chakra, inhale back to the crown of the head. Again, 
five times. Exhale here to the nostril, to the tip of the nostril. And up again, five times. Now you rest here at the space between the nostrils. You can breathe in and out about 10 times. If you can, then here in this place, between the nostrils, you can open Sushumna. If you feel that your nostril, one is blocked, the other is open, then you can open Sushumna. Generally, both the nostrils are by then open. If you have done this practice correctly or if you have done it often enough, then both the nostrils should be flowing freely. If not, you can open it using willpower. We have done that in the earlier sessions, how to do this. After you have done this, you breathe up here to Agya Chakra, from the nostril to the Agya Chakra and back, from the nostril to the Agya Chakra and back. You feel this as you are comfortable, stay there. And once you are done with that, you go back here to this place and reverse the process. So now you would go back from the top to the nostrils, from the top to the throat chakra, from the top to the heart center, from the crown to Manipura chakra, from the crown of the head to the perineum, from the crown of the head to the knees, from the crown of the head to the ankles and from the crown of the head to the toes. So, so you can see this movement which started initially when we began the practice, it was from toes to head and from head to ankle, then from head to knees, from head to perineum, from head to Manipura chakra, from head to heart chakra, head to throat, head to nostril. For a moment you were here, then you reverse the entire process. So, any observations from any of you? about this exercise. What did you notice in this? What I explained. I know that this practice is a little bit complex uh, to understand. It's also a little bit complex to practice. It is after all advanced pranayam. Has anybody done this before? Chitali Karna, has it, have any of you tried it out? Yes, I tried it a few times. You've done that? Yeah, but uh, I I am with this with this practice. I am a little confused of uh, how to breathe within the body. I mean, from crown to the 
toes how do i breathe i mean i just try to feel that uh, the breathe is flowing through the body mm-hmm. but uh, it's not clear how long have you been doing this doing it for uh, almost all uh, I, i mean i use i usually practice the 61 point regularly mm-hmm. but this one i don't practice that uh, frequently sitili karana Yes. because uh, i feel confused with how to breathe within the body right okay now the thing is that when we practice regularly you get a feel for these things if you do 61 points regularly then you have already started developing a feel for it but if you don't do it regularly yeah. you will obviously have difficulties with it so with time you will get a feel you know you're not breathing in the body obviously you're breathing through your nose <laughs> the feeling yeah. oh. is more of the mind traveling your attention traveling from the head to the toes and back from the head to the ankles and back and the idea is that in this way you can drop the counting and you use the body itself as kind of a ruler you know as, as a, a measurement as a measure tape so it gives you an idea of how long you are breathing Right. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes, that's true. Samia, then did you realize that as you have start started breathing initially, your breath was longer and is getting shorter, right? Yeah, that's true. You noticed that. And how was it for you? Did you feel comfortable? Did you, you know? Did yeah. You know this more? this entire in, in method is very comfortable for me. Yeah. But with the shortening of breath. <laughs> how was that for you uh, shortening your breath no uh, my breath doesn't shorten i think well then you're not you means like because sorry? the breath shortens if you see if i start breathing 10 times from head to toes then I'm okay from to to ankle then i'm breathing from head to oh yeah knees and so. back so you understand that your breath is actually shortening in length Okay. Yeah. No, actually, I okay. What I what I tried is I tried to I mean so the length of the breath. I did not try to shorten the length of the breath. Yeah. Just I tried to feel that it's uh, just up from this length to that length. But uh, length wise, I did not try to do that. I so I thank you for letting me know. That. Okay. Yeah. So there will be shortening of breath. You are you are correct. I mean I just tried to. Uh, what I used to try is uh, I used to move slowly. from when the when i uh, when i have to come from crown to the toe to to the to the toe then i used to move fast and then when i had to come from crown to uh, nostril no, the eyebrow centers to nostril then i used to be slow mm-hmm. so i used to come slow as so yeah. i did not try to shorten the shorten the breath okay yes i so, think it is mistake yeah yeah so that's the whole purpose of shitali karna is that in a sense your breath is shortening you may the volume of breath that you're taking that volume of air yeah. that you're taking may remain the same or may also decrease but it is shortening now in that sense is a very unique exercise you see first right in the beginning you were breathing from here right to the toes and at the end you're breathing from from head to throat and then eventually even from head just to nostril so you have seen this has become so short now the breath it has become really very short hey, right say it again i could i could not hear i, I could not i'm um, follow up the last sentence i could not follow yeah the, the last sentence was simple it was basically a repetition of what i have been saying okay is okay. Uh, yeah. is right oh, i, I Oh okay Somia thank you very much uh, this was now for everybody okay. no not just specifically for you okay okay, okay. I, i i just had a question okay so so yeah i had a question that is why are we shortening the breath what yeah. is the advantage yes yes so now as i said this is advanced pranayam if you have not prepared yourself and not done all the other things before you will have difficulties doing this because the shortening of breath 
basically is leading to kumbhak. It's leading to a suspension of breath. We did kumbhak in the last session. So this is another way of practicing kumbhak. It is okay. simply another way of Thank doing you. it. But it is basically taking you to the same place. We must understand that of all the practices that we have covered in the last 10, this is the 11th session, what we have covered in terms of theory as well as in terms of practice is partly building up the person so that you can go to a certain level, but must also remember that certain practices, especially in the area of advanced pranayam, do not necessarily uh, have a order. Many of them stand alone, which means you can do 61 points and attain the same thing as you would by doing Shitalikarna or eventually also Yoga Nidra, which we will do next. So, Shitalikarna basically is leading us to Kumbha. And the reversal of pro pro the process leads us out again. So if you see, the first part was Nivritti Marg. It's leading us back to the source. And the second part on reversing it brings us back out into the world. That's Pravritti Marg. So you don't stay inside, but you come back outside. In many traditions, this concept is reversed. They say, okay, we just go in and that's it. They only talk about Pravritti Marg. They do not talk about coming back. In our tradition, we do that because ours is Purnama, the complete path. So we do both. We don't stay inside. You come back outside because you have a body and you're living in this world. So the process reverses then afterwards. Okay. So now there have been some questions which I can finally um, talk to. Uh, Rasik, I don't know if he's still here. Yes, um, Rasik, you have joined in the 11th session. Obviously, you have missed all the earlier sessions. For that, you can look at our YouTube channel and uh, you can find these in YouTube in the That First English channel. Patricia, what is the second chakra? What about the second chakra and why don't we breathe from head to Swadhisthana? Yes, um, it is true. We skipped the second chakra here in, in uh, Shitalikarna. The honest answer is this is the way it is taught in the tradition. I can only make an educated guess. And my educated guess is that if this practice is leading to kumbhak eventually, you're withdrawing from the world, then you don't necessarily want to activate the second chakra, which is also the chakra of sexual energies. So you skip that. That is my educated guess, but I cannot give you a 100% um, answer for that. Okay, Asha, you need to. Um, hmm. She's muted. She's not muted. So, okay, I had to mute you, Asha, because there was something in the background which was disturbing everybody. All right, so any more questions on that? If you do this practice regularly, the way to end it is that you don't just reverse it when you would reverse it and come out of the practice would be, of course, 
going then from head to nostrils and head to throat and head to heart and head to navel, head to perineum, eventually head to knees and head to toes or ankles and then head to toes. Once you're here, you don't just get up and, you know, just start doing whatever you're doing. You turn to the left hand side. You continue breathing as if you're breathing from the right hand side. So you're lying on the left hand side. Imagine you're lying on your left hand side and you continue to breathe as though you're breathing from head to toe on your right side. Do this 10 times. Turn around, now you're lying on the right side. When you're lying on the right side, you breathe from head to toe and back again from the left side now and you feel as if your entire right side is, you know, energized. Then you can slowly get up from this position. After you have done this, you can do yoga nidra if you want. You don't have to. These practices, 61 points and Shitali Karna, also stand alone. They can be done as separate practices. Or if you want, you can lead up to a more deeper version of yoga nidra. If you want to do a very deep version of yoga nidra, then do 61 points first. Go through these points in your body. Then do Shitali Karna. And only then start Yoga Nidra. This will take quite some time. This can take up to half an hour or even longer, 45 minutes, I think. And if you do it, then all the time you have to be aware of the fact that the environment should be dark, should be very quiet and you should not fall asleep. It's very important. Do not fall asleep. If you are on the verge of sleep, if you find yourself falling asleep, then get out of that. You have to stop the practice because you would otherwise form the habit of falling asleep. Okay, so uh, any questions on that? So, if no questions, then we can uh, do Yoga Nidra. So, as I mentioned already, that Yoga Nidra as well as, uh, sorry, 61 points in Shitali Karna and Yoga Nidra can be done one each following the other as a lengthy version of Yoga Nidra. And the actual practice of yoga nidra itself is much shorter. And in this exercise, you would go to this point here, yeah, sorry. Hmm. Uh, you start your practice here at this chakra, Agya chakra, where you would seem to inhale three to four breaths from the Agya chakra. Then you breathe here. 
at the Vishuddha Chakra. Again for three, four breaths, a little bit longer is also okay. And whilst you do this, you can visualize, if you wish, a moon there. You visualize a moon. You can visualize a crescent moon. And then finally, you rest here at the Anahat Chakra. Where you would again breathe as though from the Anahat Chakra, breathing three to four times. Resting there for a while, but no longer than 10 minutes if you're starting this practice. Okay, no longer than 10 minutes. What is the purpose of this practice and what is Yoga Nidra actually? Anybody who's, who has done this practice or has been doing it regularly? Nobody's doing this practice? What about you, Ashish? Weren't you doing this practice at some point of time? Um, mainly I've been doing 61 points, oh. This is not very often, yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> okay. So, well, that's okay. If people have not been doing yoga nidra, that's fine. So, I have often said in any case that yoga nidra is not just a practice or a technique. It is a state. So I have asked this question, is yoga nidra a technique or a state? Now you saw for yourself that the actual technique of yoga nidra itself was very short. What happens if you successfully practice this technique, if you are well prepared, if you have done the whole systematic method, you go and do this really regularly, as in daily, then you might find that at some point of time, when you're there at the heart center, you have this feeling that your breath stops, that even your heart stops. Initially, when you experience that the first time, you may be afraid. You have this feeling, oh my God, I'm going to die, because you think, oh, my heart stops. So, but don't worry, you're not going to die. And you have this feeling of being somehow between states. You're not in the external world, yet you are aware and conscious. And at the same time, you seem to be internal. So what's happening there? What's happening is that you have slipped back through the different layers, the different koshas, and are identifying now with a much deeper layer of prana, which could also be your individual self, the Atman itself. And you are between, somewhere between Samadhi and Turiya. You're, you're, you're in deep sleep, but you are conscious. That state is very difficult to explain, describe, because most of us do not have an experience of it. So yes, Yoga Nidra is a technique, but it's a technique that leads to the state. So merely practicing this technique without good Preparation, which includes food, a healthy lifestyle, good company, 
mm, right attitude to life, regular practice, daily practice, systematic practice. Without all this, if you do this practice, you could be just wasting your time. So if you are going to do this practice, then you should be quite aware that this is an advanced practice and therefore do it with the proper preparation. The other question that I'm asking there is, is Yoga Nidra Pranayam? Is it Atma Vichar? What is it? How would you describe Yoga Nidra? Any ideas on what it is? Um, my understanding was similar to 61 points. It's also pranayam because it's working at the level of prana. Mm -hmm. It is definitely a pranayam practice because, as you mentioned, like 61 points, uh, it works at the level of prana. Why would it not be atma vichara? Finally, in Atma Vichara, what is your ultimate question that you're asking? You know the very famous question that is asked in Vichara. Yes, Krishna, the ultimate question is, who am I? So, Mita, your response was it's pranayam, where we can go deep and then do contemplation or internal dialogue. Internal dialogue is a um, English term that was given um, so as to make it more easy for people to start, you know. It gave the sense of there being two aspects. Somebody is having a dialogue with somebody, therefore an internal dialogue. Now, when you reach the state of Yoga Nidra, the state, I'm not talking about the technique anymore, you reach the state of Yoga Nidra, it's being in deep sleep, but you're conscious. What is there in deep sleep? We know what is there in the waking state, yes? All this is happening in the waking state. We know what is happening in the dream state. We have dreams, all sorts of visuals and, and um, you know, this whole dream world. What happens in deep sleep? It's okay if you give me a totally intellectual answer. What happens in deep sleep? Anybody wants to attempt to answer this question? Uh, my understanding is that mind does not have any object to attach to, so it kind of goes back to the uh, Adiprana state or even beyond that. Yes, yes. There is no more, there are no more objects. So the, the external world disappeared. The internal world, the dream world also disappeared. So what is there? There are no more objects. But there is a subject. There is the one who knows, the one who observes, the one who witnesses all this. Who was the one who was witnessing the dreams in the dream state? Right? That one is still there. The objects have disappeared, but the subject is there. So, the question, who am I, is answered in this practice, if you reach that stage. So you don't really do contemplation or internal dialogue the way you have actually been 
taught that. That is a practice to begin with. And that hopefully one day leads you to the answer to the question, who am I? And you can give a theoretical answer that is written in all the books on Advaita. It says, oh, you Atman, your divinity, your God, your cosmic self, your universal self, your individual self. Many different words are, you know, terms are used. But those are just words. These are just intellectual words. When you go to the state of Yoga Nidra, you experience it for yourself. And you get the answer to this question, who am I? Therefore, it is both. It is pranayam as well as Atma Vichara. Yoga Nidra is that unique state in which all sort of, you know, practices or techniques collapse because you are no longer in this field anymore. You have gone beyond that, as Ashish put it, Adi Prana. You are now sort of in, not in this world anymore. You get the answer to this ultimate question. Many of you know of this question, who am I, from all the neo Advaitites and all the people who follow Advaita and uh, the philosophies of, um, of Adi Shankara. They do a lot of intellectual reading and studying. And when we talk about vichara, then they keep saying, oh, ask yourself, who am I? But just asking myself, who am I? It's not leading anywhere. Like a parrot, you can say, oh yes, who am I? I'm Atman. Who am I? I'm Atman. Does that help you? It doesn't get you further, does it? But when you practice and attain the state of Yoga Nidra, where you experience in deep sleep, consciously, that shining light of your consciousness, you get your answer. You will find out for yourself, who am I? So for those of you who do attempt to practice, if you are going to practice it, then practice it regularly. It is of little use to have an erratic practice. Frankly, that goes for everything, but especially for, for this, because it's a very subtle practice. So if you're going to practice it, then practice it daily. And if it is too long to do the whole thing daily, then you can just do the short version daily. But as I said, without a systematic practice, if you do this, you might be just wasting your time. There are many, many versions of Yoga Nidra. We do the version with 61 points, Shitali Karna, and then the actual practice of Yoga Nidra. There are very complicated versions of this with a lot of visualization, where, for example, in 61 points, you visualize different colors, different nadis. They may be connected to deities and even mantras. Shitali Karna also with a lot of visualization and then eventually yoga nidra of course so this there are many versions and this is the samaya version in which basically you're sitting in the dark literally as well as internally and allowing that light to shine forth the light of pure consciousness So, any comments, any questions so far? I 
just wanted to ask, um, very often one hears that this Yoga Nidra has been invented by Swami Satyananda Saraswati from the Bihar School of Yoga. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you maybe elaborate on this a little bit and <laughs> explain the background? <laughs> that, that's quite a joke, you know, because uh, this is the eternal practice, the, the eternal uh, way. I mean, whoever the Swami was, uh, he didn't invent uh, uh, pure consciousness, I presume. He did not invent, uh, you know, the answer to the question, who am I? So... There, as I mentioned earlier, so many different techniques. What he did was for the Swami, uh, what was his name again? Satyananda Saraswati. Yes, Satyananda. He is from the Munger school in Bihar, and it is a, also a Shakta tradition. What he simply did was he was one of the first guys or the first people to put it out in the form of a CD. And that version is a extreme visualization. Throughout millennia, traditions, different traditions, not only ours, many traditions, as I mentioned, have different versions of it. So if you go speak to some wandering ascetic who might be doing this and you tell him that, oh, Swami Satyananda was the first guy who did it, he will laugh. He will laugh at this because this has been practiced in different forms by uh, yogis, seekers, um, sages since not only centuries but since millennia. So it's absolutely a laughable uh, claim. I don't think he makes it, but probably his students make that claim. So it's something um, one cannot... Uh, claim to have invented. These are ancient traditions and they, they manifest in different forms. So as I said, there are different versions of this. The version we are talking about here is the Samaya version. It's the simplest version. And while it's the simplest version, it can be at the same time the most difficult version. And why is that? Because in the other versions where there's visualization, the mind is kept busy. The mind is so busy that you stay at that busy level of mind. If you are visualizing all the time, that which level are you on? You are going to remain at the waking state level because you are busy visualizing things. If I asked you right now to visualize a beautiful pond the sparkling blue color and in the middle of the pond there is a beautiful pink ro lotus with a thousand petals and sitting in the middle of this lotus is a beautiful frog. So everybody visualized that? Was it fun visualizing it? Tatan, can you speak uh, or are you traveling? Yeah, no, I can. I'm trying to visualize. Yes, and were you able to visualize that? More or less? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, and when you were visualizing that, what were you actually trying to do? Were you thinking? Um, you know, trying to think of the right colors for the blue, sparkling blue, beautiful pink lotus. Uh, not really, not at, at this micro level. Yes. Uh, I, was, I was kind of thinking, uh, what next? Yeah, uh, but it took some effort, did it, to visualize that? Uh, not, uh, not a great amount of effort, but, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it wasn't, uh, that effortless also. Yeah. And what, if I may ask, what faculties did you use? I mean, there was some logic, there was creativity, you know, all these things. 
you have to be creative. I, 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 I didn't. Uh, I don't know whether I was creative or not. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I guess visualization is quite a creative um, thinking uh, as opposed to logical thinking, you know? But I mean, when you're trying to think yeah, of logic, yeah. while visualizing yeah, there's, there's is more, more creative. Yeah. Still, whatever... Yeah, so, uh... Therefore, the capacity or the Sorry. faculty that we use is that of our creative aspect of our mind. And what I'm trying to get at is that you're still at the level of mind here with external world and internal world because you're visualizing something. And the purpose of Yoga Nidra is to go and find the light within. So if you cover yourself with different lights, the nadis in different colors or doing Shitali Karna with, you know, going up and down and following the Nari's in different colors, you are adding at artificial lights. You are adding, you're visualizing, and that's an external process. You are working and operating at the level of Antakarna. You're not looking or allowing pure consciousness, which is that behind Antakarna, to emerge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Gautam. Thank you. Radhika ji, I have a question here. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, is it okay to start with a guided, uh, uh, you know, through a CD or some kind of a guided uh, process and then drop this thing? Then drop the CD. Yes. Yes, initially, if you wish, uh, one can do that. But um, as I said, using any kind of guided meditation tends to be habit forming. I actually know lots and lots of people who keep buying all sorts of CDs. <laughs> they actually never, never practice it, anything from those CDs or, uh, you know, audios. Um, much more useful is, I mean, since you already know the practice, is to simply do it. And maybe you make some mistakes sometimes, but if you feel that you have, you need something initially, then yes, go ahead and do it. But these, be aware that these things can be habit forming. Then you should really drop it and drop it really fast. Like just do it maximum two or three times with the CD and then drop it, you know. Because more than that, if you keep it, you just form a habit. And mostly people using CDs just tend to fall asleep. It's very passive, for one. And two, is you are continuously outside in the external world. You're not really gone to your body and then deeper at all. So the only purpose for a CD, uh, guided meditation, would be just to help you train the technique in the first couple of times and after that it's of no use in fact after the first two times it is only an obstacle the cd becomes an obstacle perfect perfect thank you mm -hmm. in fact uh, the reason i asked this question was uh, i was not very comf uh, confident of uh, doing the 61 points myself so that's why i i downloaded the uh, guided meditation uh, for the 61 points and yeah. okay. uh, I was also not sure that whether I should be doing with the CD so mm -hmm. I think this and you've answered it very clearly thank you very much yes okay good Patricia says maybe it's useful to change the random thoughts for some people but it should be left over I'm not sure with what uh, you're referring to here Patricia uh, with reference to what is this um, Maybe you put this earlier and we have gone ahead in this uh, conversation. The visualizations will be useful to change random thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, well, visualizations are useful in a sense that they help certain people focus a little bit, you know, to get a certain um, flow. But for the purpose of 
attaining a deeper um, state of consciousness, they can become an obstacle. As I mentioned just earlier, like a CD can become a habit forming thing. So does visualization. At some point of time, you have to drop that. And especially when it's very complicated visualization techniques, because you're never going to see the true light if you have created artificial lights. So even if it helps your mind flow a little bit, get a little bit of focus, for the purpose of attaining a higher state of consciousness, it is not really uh, very useful. It can end up being an obstacle. Okay, Rashika, I don't know what CD chanting, one word at the beginning, later, we can get the whole concentration on our breath. Hmm. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. As I mentioned that if you use any sort of guided practice, first, there are many different guided practices out there. And um, many of them have visualization. Uh, you often mentioned the one by Swami Satyanand from Munger School, Bihar. And uh, there are others, as I said, um, if you can do this without any CD, then do it without a CD. And if you need a CD or some guided version, then maybe two or three times maximum and then drop it. That's what I would suggest. But once again, to everybody, I person, this is my personal opinion, and this is what I advise my close students. Don't even bother to waste your time doing this if you have not done all the stuff that came before. If you are not prepared, no point doing it. So there was so much stuff. We covered all this, remember? We talked about breathing exercises. We talked about posture. We talked about diaphragmatic breathing. We went through a whole systematic breathing approach. You know, we, we, we learned the, about the principle and very important is diet, food, you know, regular exercise, good, uh, healthy lifestyle. All this, if you have not done, and if you haven't worked with the more subtler pranayama practices, of Sushumna and you know done some purification of the glaciers that you have, then you could well be wasting your time. Because when the glaciers are very heavy, very dark, then not much happens. There is not much that you're gonna get out of doing practices. Okay, so with that we'll end this session. I hope um, that made some sense to all of you. We have our next session on Pranayam next Sunday. It could well be our last or second last session. And otherwise, for the rest of us, we meet again on Friday for Bhagavad Gita or eventually on Sunday for Master and Pranayam. Thank you, everybody. It was nice having you. Bye bye. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Rajiji, I had a small question regarding that city city current of practice. Should I ask it now? Um. Unfortunately, I need to leave now, and so okay. we can take that question uh, next, uh, next, Sunday. next Sunday. Okay. Have a nice week. Yes, thank you. You too. Bye bye, everyone. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Mm -hmm.